I'm here in the Twin Palms neighborhood taking my walk this morning. It's 9 o'clock in the morning, but it already feels like it's around 75, 80 degrees. It's uh, the middle of January 2024. But I got my shorts on and I don't need this sweatshirt. The sun is out and it feels really nice. There's no wind, so that helps a lot too. Just a few days ago, the temps here in Palm Springs were in the, the 50s and 60s. And when I would get up in the morning, it was like in the high 30 degrees, low 40s. This morning I got up and it was around 50 degrees. It's, it's not quite 60 degrees right now, but it feels like it's 70, 75. It feels really nice. This is my first time walking in this neighborhood. I've been wanting to come over here for a long time. This is located in South Palm Springs, very desirable part of Palm Springs because there's so little wind compared to the northern end up by the tramway. This part of town gets very little wind most of the time, most of the year. And I don't know if you can hear, but it's so peaceful and quiet. All I can hear are a few birds and there are some construction and maintenance people working in some of the yards and I can hear them. But other than that, it's like, really really peaceful and calm and looks like a really nice neighborhood to walk in so i want to walk around there's one house in particular that i want to see here i've been wanting to come by her house for years and years i, I have no idea why i just keep putting it off so today finally i'm here to see the location to see the exterior of the house where a famous actress died back in 1963 she died in a very tragic way in a house fire and sadly she died with her, her two children and her grandmother it's just such a sad sad story i was on my way down in this direction anyway so i thought well let me just stop by see her house and walk around the neighborhood and tell you the story about what happened back in 1963 in this house i visited her gravesite last year i finally found it and discovered that it's really really close just feet away from where jim and i purchased our future final resting place just maybe a yard or two away. So it's such a small world, especially when I think I grew up watching her mom's TV show, I Married Joan. How many of you remember that show? Never did I think when I was watching that show as a young kid, I was watching it in reruns because the show itself aired from 1953 to 1955, and I was watching it in the 1960s in reruns. It was very funny with Jim Backus, played um, the husband of Joan Davis. It was kind of like the I Love Lucy show, but you know, looking back on it now, it really hasn't held up very well where the I Love Lucy show has held up really well. But it's still funny and cute, and as a kid, I can see why I enjoyed it. But little did I know, and never would I have thought back then, that someday I would be buried, or my ashes would be inert, in a cremation wall, just a couple of yards away from the gravesite of Joan Davis's daughter, Beverly Wills. And Beverly was occasionally on the TV show as well, so I'm sure I saw her back then. I, I didn't know who she was and wouldn't have recognized her. But it is weird how small the world is and how things turn out years later that you never would have even imagined or thought about. So Beverly was born on June 7th, 1933 in Los Angeles, and she died here on this street, on Yucca Street, here in the Twin Palms neighborhood of Palm Springs on October 24th, 1963. And according to news articles, she fell asleep while smoking a cigarette in bed. And that's what caused the house fire that killed not only her, but her two young sons and her grandmother. She's buried next to her grandmother, Nina Davis. This was her mother's mother. But her two young sons, Guy, who was seven years old, and Larry, who was four years old, they're buried up in Los Angeles. Well, actually, Culver City. They're buried at Hillside Memorial Jewish Cemetery. Their father was Jewish. Even though she was only 30 years old when she died, she'd been married three times. And her husband and father of her two sons decided to bury the two children, not with their mother, up at the Jewish Cemetery in Culver City. And that's really not that surprising. I'm sure he must have blamed her for their deaths. I mean, she... At least according to the reports, the fire was, was caused by her falling asleep with a cigarette in bed. So it's not surprising that the father didn't want the two boys to be buried with their mother. Beverly's mom, Joan Davis, she's buried at Holy Cross Catholic Cemetery. She died, I think she was only 58 years old. She died of a heart attack and she was buried there at Holy Cross. So Beverly's mom is buried at Holy Cross. Her, her children are buried at Hillside Memorial Park both up in Culver City. Her father, Cy Wills, I was curious where he's buried. He's buried 
at Riverside National Cemetery, which is about 45 minutes away from Palm Springs. And then she's buried here in Palm Springs with her grandmother. So this family, I'm guessing, wasn't real close in that way. You know, sometimes families have family plots and they're all buried together. But in this case, they're just all scattered all over the place. So as I've seen over the years, some families just don't really plan ahead or care much about what happens to their bodies after they die. So that seems to be the case here. But at least Beverly is with her grandmother. They're together here at Desert Memorial Park here in Palm Springs, or actually in Cathedral City. It's about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes away from the house here. As far as I can tell, Beverly was in less than a dozen movies and TV shows. In addition to being on the I Mary Jones show. She also appeared in TV shows like Mr. Red and Petticoat Junction, some of the popular shows of the day. And she was also in a couple of very popular movies, a couple of classic movies, Something Like It Hot in 1959 and Son of Flubber in 1963. I think it may have come out after she died. The story is just tragic. And I'm thinking now, so Guy was seven years old in 1963. I was 10, so he was the same age as one of my younger brothers. And we were coming down here to Palm Springs. My grandparents lived here in 1963. And so we were here all the time. And just to think back all those years ago, it seems like almost a lifetime ago. And to think that they didn't get to live their life is just really, really sad, very tragic. And this is probably the most famous home in this neighborhood. As I've mentioned before, celebrities and Hollywood movie stars have lived down here in Palm Springs since Palm Springs became a city back in the 1930s, probably before that, probably the 1920s. And so just about every single neighborhood in Palm Springs has at least one or two celebrity homes. I'm sure there are other celebrity homes here in this neighborhood, but I'm not really doing a celebrity home tour. I'm just out for my walk today. And so I just, since I knew her home was here, I wanted to see it myself and I thought I would share it with you. But maybe in the future I'll come back if there's some other celebrity homes here that are especially notable that I think you might be interested in. I'll come back because I walk in the different neighborhoods all the time. But for today, I just wanted to take my walk and visit her home. In walking so far, I haven't seen any plaques with famous names. Not all of the neighborhoods have the plaques announcing you know, the famous people who live there. Some do, some don't. And like I say, this is my first time walking around this neighborhood. And it's not just a grid. So it's, it's very weird and complicated. It's almost like a maze. So I'm sure I'm missing part of the neighborhood. But I'm going to go see if I can find a, f a few more areas and a few more streets to walk on because I haven't really walked that far this morning. And it's such a beautiful day, I'd like to walk some more. So so let's keep going and we'll see if I, if I happen to see any homes with historic plaques or the names of famous people, I'll certainly show them to you. Look at that interesting design. I don't think I've ever seen a design like that before here. And I think this might be a cul-de-sac here. Now here are some of those really beautiful mid-century modern bricks in pink. So the house isn't in pink, but the bricks are. That's really nice, isn't it? That's an interesting house, very modern. Stainless steel siding there. You don't see that a lot. That's pretty striking, isn't it? Especially from this angle. This is a really interesting style. I've seen this actually quite a number of times around town, different neighborhoods. So much variety in this neighborhood. Lots of mid-century modern, but other architectural styles too. Look at these beautiful doors, these front doors. And of course, lots of homes with hedges around them. Wouldn't be Palm Springs without Homes completely surrounded by huge hedges. I really love all the color, different colored doors, don't you? And all the colorful flowers. These, of course, are the bougainvillea that are probably the most popular flower here in the desert. They just grow like weeds. They're really beautiful and they grow in the heat and they don't need a lot of water. That's an interesting 
I guess they're remodeling this. That's nice. As you can see, the most of the names of the streets here are Indian names, or many of the names are Indian names, Apache, Navajo. Here's another brightly colored door, another primary colored door, which is really nice. Look at that. I wonder if that part was added on later. The garage was probably added on later. Most of these homes just had, most of the homes in Palm Springs back in the day, mid-century modern homes just had carports. They didn't have covered garages. And that's a butterfly home, but it, most of the butterfly homes don't have that area right there where the door is. So that was probably added later, I'm guessing. I can't believe I'm just in my t-shirt and shorts right now. It's, it might be around 9.30 in the morning. This is January, I think it's January 15th. And not that I can't believe that it's so warm and beautiful here in Palm Springs in January, but it's just that last week was so frigid. It was so cold last week that I couldn't even walk without being completely bundled up. So it can really change very fast. So today feels like a beautiful spring day. It's really nice. Okay, Twin Palm Estates. I think these are condos, I think. Not sure. Well, they seem to be freestanding homes, so I guess they're not condos. I guess it's just the name of this particular development right here within this neighborhood. And I don't know if you can see, if it, it's pretty far away, but at the very end of the street here, up on the hillside there, the pink house, if you can see that, white and pink, that was Suzanne Summers' former home. So this street's called Aquanetta. That sounds like a drag queen's name, doesn't it? I'm sure there has to be a drag queen out there with that name. <laughs> so we're still in the Twin Palms neighborhood. And right on the other side of those newer condos or townhomes is Palm Canyon Drive, South Palm Canyon Drive. So if you're wondering where we are, that's, that will give you an idea if you know Palm Canyon. Palm Canyon Drive is the main street that goes through Palm Springs from one end to the other. This is what the uh, butterfly style home looks like when it hasn't been changed. But again, it looks like they've added a garage. Which these days, that's probably a good idea to have garages. Back in the day, many of these were just weekend homes and winter homes, so people didn't really necessarily need a garage to store anything or even to store your car. I mean, the temperature is so mild here year-round. Well, I guess I should qualify that when I say mild. It's, uh, the winters are pretty mild. Summer's 120 degrees, I guess. Not everyone would consider that mild. But as long as your car is under a shaded, shaded carport, that's all you really needed back then anyway. Okay, so here's a cul-de-sac. Aquanetta Circle. Aquanet, wasn't that a hairspray back in the 60s? I seem to remember lots of commercials for Aquanet. This one's an especially large one. It looks like they've added on behind the house. So this neighborhood is just right across the street from the Ace Hotel, which as you can tell used to be a Denny's way back in the day, back in the 1960s. And so on this side of the street we have coffee and then right behind this new development, which is OCEO or OCO, is the Twin Palms neighborhood, the older Twin Palms neighborhood. Yeah, so this is all new here. These are, I think they're townhomes. I don't know if they're condos or townhomes. Okay, no Ace Hotel parking. <laughs> and you can see it's still within the uh, Twin Palms neighborhood. It's nice that there are new and old homes here mixed in together to choose from. 
not everyone likes the mid-century modern. I mean, I, I think everyone likes the design style, but not everyone wants to live in a 60-year-old home. Some people prefer new homes, like Jim. He absolutely would not live in an older home. So we've always lived in new homes. Every home we've had has been new. In fact, every home I've ever lived in, even with my family, was new. You know, when I was growing up. Even my grandparents' home here, that now is a mid-century modern classic home, was brand new when they bought it and moved in. And I was just thinking, you don't see a lot of sidewalks here in the desert. I think someone left a comment about that, asking where are all the sidewalks in the last neighborhood I visited. And you can see the older homes there across the street. There are no sidewalks. I'm not really sure why. But newer homes, I think the city probably requires that sidewalks be included. But back in the day, yeah, almost none of the neighborhoods here in Palm Springs had sidewalks, and most still don't. Now, this is the backside of the very famous historic Ocotillo Hotel that's now a condo development. But years ago, when this was first built, this was one of the most famous condos, or hotels, I should say, here in Palm Springs. Pretty much every celebrity, every movie star from Hollywood, they all came and stayed here at the Ocotillo. Years later, it was purchased by Jerry Buss, and I can't remember if it was also owned by Gene Autry. I, I know he owned another hotel here. I don't know if he, I can't remember now if he owned this hotel. And even if there's a, an historic plaque, but this was a hangout. This was definitely a hangout of all the celebrities back in the day. They didn't have those screen doors, I'm sure. But with, for security now, they all seem to have them. I'm gonna walk around the front and show you what it looks like. It's much nicer in the front. I was driving by the other day and I think I noticed that they had painted everything and it didn't really have that mid-century modern look like it used to. I think they've, they painted it sort of a tan and a beige, which made me very sad to see. It used to be white and I think orange, you know, very mid-century modern. Although they still do have the turquoise doors, which is nice, but they've really toned down the orange. Now it's just sort of a, I don't know what it is, that? It's sort of a gold color. Yeah, very sad. This used to be all white. White and... I think it was sort of white and gray and orange. See what I mean? How it's just real beige now? That's just very sad to me. It used to have such a nice mid-century modern feel. You know, so at least in my opinion, but you know, everybody's different, I guess. And it looks like they've ruined, again, in my opinion, the sign. They had a really beautiful old sign that was there for years. And now they've changed it, and I don't know what this is, but yeah, to me it looks very sad. Sorry, I don't mean to be disparaging this place that I love so much. This was an historic landmark. I don't know if it ever was landmark status. Probably not, or they probably wouldn't have allowed these changes to be made. And Elmer's Restaurant, very popular restaurant. It's been here for decades and decades. One of the best places for breakfast. I mean, it's really, really very good. Well, I mean, I, I guess it doesn't look that bad, but I miss the original sign. Let's see what it looks like from out here. Yeah, you hardly notice it anymore. It used to really stand out. It was so cool. It was like one of the coolest buildings here in Palm Springs, I think. Right, so there's Elmer's. I had breakfast there with Marsha and her friend, gosh, a year or two ago. You could check back on some of the older videos if you're curious to see what we ate. I don't know. I mean, this does have sort of a mid-century look to it, so I guess it's not bad. It's just not the original sign that I liked, that I really, really, that I remember. Hmm. Okay, so it looks like it's all under renovation. They're redoing the... Wow. 
this is not mid-century modern flooring so I don't know if they're taking that out or if they're adding it maybe they're just trying to change the whole look that was more of what the the font looked like the type before I don't know well that looks nice so anyway this is what it looked like and maybe it never was designated as a historic site but it is very historic but it really is a very historic Palm Springs location. If you look online, if you're curious, you can look online and you'll find all kinds of information about all the famous people who have stayed here over the years. And I wish I could get in. I, I know I did film inside in the pool area many, many years ago. I don't know. I probably have that footage somewhere, but who knows where. So, again, you can just look online. If you're curious, I'm sure you can find more information about the history and some of the photos and things. And since these are, many of these are for sale, these are condos now that are for sale, you can check out what they look like online as well. One of the things I've always really liked so much about Palm Springs is just how little it has changed over the years. I mean, it's surprising how little or, or how many things are still the same. But I've just noticed this morning driving here and I've been thinking about it the last, you know, last few weeks or few months, I've noticed that all of a sudden things are starting to change. And I guess, you know, that's not surprising. It's been, what, 60, yeah, it's been 60, 65 years since most of these buildings were built, some 70, 75 years ago. But many of the businesses that were in business way back then, back in the 60s, were still in business here until just recently. I mean, I think there are still a few that are still in business that were in business back then. But little by little, one by one, many of them are starting to go away, which is sad. So just another reason, I guess, for me to walk around and, and capture as many of these old memories on film that I can. While I'm still around. <laughs> My grandparents had this same mailbox when <laughs> I was growing up here in Palm Springs at their house. Same color too. That's what I mean about how so many things are the same as they were back when I was growing up, which is kind of nice. Turquoise, pink, orange, yellow. Some of the more popular colors here back in the 1950s and 60s. That's pretty. That stonework was very, very popular back then. Still is. That's a really pretty pathway. Another yellow door. Look at this beautiful Cadillac. Is this Cadillac or? Yeah, Fleetwood. Yeah, it's the other nice thing in these neighborhoods. Not only do you see the, the beautiful historic homes, but there are a lot of historic cars to go with them. That is so beautiful, isn't it? This is really pretty. Love the colors. And white gravel was very popular back then in the 50s and 60s. White gravel and pink homes. Yeah, I've been walking for, gosh, almost two hours now. So I've only walked about not even two miles, I don't think, but that's fine. A two hour walk's nice. So until our next walk around a neighborhood here in Palm Springs, thanks for joining me today, everybody. And I'll see you next time.